morning. So let's start. So what we did so far, we have installed vCenter and last class. So today what we will do is VMware. Let's understand a few things related to VMware vCenter server. <clears throat> okay, so a few things we haven't discussed on the other day. Uh, we have we have discussed few options. What what all the things that we can do within the vCenter, and what it supports, and what is PSC, and what is uh, VC. Right, these things we discussed today. What we will do is we'll understand how this setup is looks like. So remember, <clears throat> I said we have around four different servers in the picture. Actually, five that we powered on. Out of all these, on top of it, you will have your vCenter server. Okay, what is the vCenter server name? It's yours. An IP sixty eight thirty dot fifty right and <clears throat> you have zero one zero two zero three. Okay, IPs. What is IP? 192, 168, 30.51, Active Directory server, which is integrated for name resolutions. <clears throat> then, so what we did, we have added these ESXA servers into vCenter. This is what we did in last class so far. So, can you explain me the real time scenario in the sense how it looks like if, if I want to build the same sort of same sort of setup how your real time setup looks like okay it's nothing you'll have one rack right in your data center and nowadays you will just purchase three ESXA servers only okay what is IP for these three? Example. Right. These three, yes, accessories. That's it. I will not build anything else. So these three. So become one, two, three. That's it. So what I will do, Active Directory server, I will build on top of this. Can I create a VM in real time? And vCenter server, I will build on top of this as a VM. Is it possible? I have a three physical ESXA servers I'm saying in my real time and I will install ESXi and configure everything and then I'll create one VM and configure it as a active directory. <clears throat> Is it possible or not? Hmm? Yes or no? Yes. At least. Yes. yes. Okay. okay. Again, I will create one more appliance. I'll install vCenter server application. <clears throat> possible or not? Right? It is possible. Yeah. 
So if I simulate this setup into a lab, it looks like this, but in your real time, this VM is part of this ESXA host. This VM is part of this ESXA host. That is what I mean to say. Okay. But in our lab, it's different scenario. So this is, this is the entire setup what we have so far. Now we need to understand there is something called database. Okay. So I want to understand VMware 6.0. Seven database. Okay, so VMware six point seven will support embedded Postgres SQL database and Microsoft any other enterprise databases that you can use it. So for VMware 6.7, bundled Postgres SQL database is suitable for the environments with up to 20 hosts and 200 virtual machines. Okay, important if you can, you if you use the embedded Postgres SQL, uninstalling vCenter to server on Windows or uninstall it in embedded, data will be lost. Okay, if you if you do, do the uninstall install, you'll lose the DB. It means your vCenter server also contains embedded SQL, Postgres SQL database. What is the purpose of this? <clears throat> How to check? Let me go to vCenter server. What is the IP? 30.50. So 192.168.1.1. Okay. Right. So let me change the settings a little bit. Visible. Okay. We'll see a lot of these services are running. inside the vCenter server appliance. You'll see Postgres, Postgres service, DB connections are right. Couple of Postgres services also running. What is the purpose of this database? Why you need a database? Anyone? <clears throat> So yesterday, yesterday what happened? Vivek is doing some patching and unfortunately he logged into the machine and he, he is trying to check something called uptime. So he can simply run the system info on command line but what he did he went to the network settings and he tried to find out the boot time since when the NIC is up and running or connected. So <clears throat> while checking it, he unfortunately clicked on disable NIC card and server went down. Now he don't know how to fix that issue and he is trying to log in into vCenter a couple of times. Okay, he don't have a vCenter access by the way. He is trying, he is trying, but those logs were generated, right? So and so user is trying to log in into vCenter on 15th March at 10 p.m. Right? This needs to be maintained for at least six months or so. Who did what and who is doing what and what kind of errors that got generated by system. And <clears throat> let's say uh, Vivek has the full system access on the vCenter and he rebooted something yesterday. Right? That needs to be tracked or not. 
because vCenter has 100 host and 1000 VMs and 1000 VMs provided to 1000 different applications or uh, four or five business units and around two, two three thousand people are using the servers. Now you are responsible for all the two three thousand people indirectly or directly. Right? If you simply shut down something, it will impact the business on the front end. Then what is the point of security? Right? So if even if you click on it, if you edit settings, if you add a if you add a RAM, if you change the CPU, if you add more storage you do anything inside the vCenter everything will be recorded in database let me show you let me quickly log into the vCenter for that Thirty dot 55 <clears throat> i'll always have to log into the vCenter sorry what we call it as domain controller because the dns resolves inside the domain controller outside i cannot access the vcenter Go to history last week. Yeah, this I need to bookmark. This I need to bookmark somewhere. This. Okay, login. Otherwise, it's difficult man every time. We see right administrator the red VSPR dot local. Now I logged in. Right. let me remove the main host from the v center i have added this for my other session yesterday disconnect i want to remove the host <coughs> gone See, it is removing the host. Gone, right? Now, who did this activity? I did this activity. We are my administrator, and he disconnected the host at ten o'clock today, and he removed the host at 10, around ten o'clock today. So these things will be recorded in vCenter server backend database called Postgres SQL database. Why you need all these things? Because the auditing purpose you need all these things for the security concern. Right? Also, if there is any alarm, okay, so and so alarm has been triggered on 15th. Now today is 16th. 15th, you have these three alerts. Okay, this is also just a moment, just a moment. I'm sorry, yeah. Inside the V center. And where? In the database. Now Go to vCenter once again and menu if you look at there are a lot of things you can do one is you can manage host and cluster and you can manage different views that's it you can manage your virtual machines and templates data stores 
is simply storage and network okay so in short always remember you are simply responsible to manage three things three things what are the three things server which is physical means esxi or virtual means vm both i call it as server right storage local or network and network so you're responsible to manage server storage network server contains cpu and ram storage contains hard disk contains hard disk and your network so in short you are responsible to manage only these three things inside the vcenter anything else servers virtual machines both i'll call it as server and storage right and network okay so here also host and cluster vms and templates storage networking that's it content library you'll have all the images in the content library you can upload the images into a content library that we'll see later on and global inventory list you have any other sorry global inventory list you have any other vcenters I have only one V center. If you have, you can add it here. Okay, all the V centers can be managed in one central location. You can add multiple V centers into this. Okay, and what else? Policies and profiles auto deploy. deploy image builder that we'll see later on and developer center if you have a code you can simply develop deploy it here we realize operations for reporting and dashboard and stuff you can you need to install we we, we realize operations manager server that is one more vm you need to install it and configure it here okay and of administration user management and rest of the stuff you can do it here what else update manager update manager is responsible to upgrade patch your esxi host that we'll see at the end so in short these are the few things that you have to work upon within the vcenter and go to task and events what all the tasks that you performed so far remove host disconnect host everything not today since since when since we center is built and up and running what all the things that you are doing everything will be recorded in the task events system generated events esx has thrown some error or uh, some of the service is down see any kind of warnings anything anything it will be recorded inside the events right these two things for auditing purpose that's it anything else you have nothing and go to clusters monitor these are the couple of options that we will show <coughs> later on linked v centers nothing extensions nothing update manager right so in short this is how you operate your v center only one central location now what is next i have a data center and i have three esxi host if i look at the data center configuration go to data center summary it is showing 
uh, in the data center, you have three hosts and one network uh, that I'll explain later. You have three hosts and consolidated size is 18 GB RAM, zero storage and some gigahertz of CPU. Now, can you tell me the features of this vCenter, please? What all the features that it can support? Vivek? You are talking about HADRS? Yes. So, it will support few features called HADRS, FT, vSAN, vSphere distributed switch, and so on. Right, these couple of these features are not the features that are running at vCenter level. Okay, you need to have clusters. What you need to have clusters. How it looks like? Let me let me draw a different picture. So you have your vCenter at top level, and under that, what is it? vCenter name. This is your vCenter at top level, right? And under the vCenter you'll have, what you'll have? What is this? The clusters, uh, we have host no. data center. Okay, so in V center, we'll have data center. Under the data center, you need to create what you need to create. Cluster. Okay, how to create a cluster? Right click new cluster i'm i'm not enabling any of these features right vsan ha drs i said these are the few features that vcenter supports not actually vcenter supports vcenter is responsible for managing all these features but cluster supports all these features means let me create a cluster first i'll explain prod underscore cluster one production cluster one that's it so now cluster has been created cluster has been created we have collected some of the common configuration tasks to make it easier to get your cluster set up up running if you prefer to configure cluster manually you can choose it fine i don't want all these things skip quick start i am fine how to take care of myself Okay, so now I have a cluster. Prod underscore cluster one. So you need to create a cluster. Under the cluster, you can add a host. What is the host name? This is the host name. So this is a host name. These are the three hosts we have added. <coughs> now if you look at all these three hosts are not part of the cluster, they are part of data center. If you look at cluster summary, cluster summary is zero because nothing is added in the cluster. No host, nothing, right? But if you look at the data center, part of the data center. Now, how to add a host into cluster? Very simple. Simply select drag and drop. Now, you see, 
number of CPUs and cluster has got some capacity 6 GB RAM. Okay, it is easy to calculate. Remember, RAM size is 6 GB. I'm adding a second host. 12 GB RAM. I'm adding third host. 18 GB RAM. Now cluster capacity is increased. If you look at the data center, it is also showing the same thing. Right? Now, imagine all the three, you can add a host under data center. These you call it as standalone host. H A D R S F T V S A N. These understand. You can add a host into data center directly, and you can manage it. No issue. But these features you will not get. If you want to utilize all these features, you need to create a cluster and add a host inside the cluster now these hosts are responsible and these hosts sorry these hosts will support all these features if you keep the host outside the cluster these features are not applicable or you will not get those features for your workloads understand or any confusion in short your ha drs FT VSAM. These features are bounded to clusters. Cluster level. Okay. VSAM. Okay. Apologies for the typos. Right. Understand the concept. Top level V center. Data center is for logical collection. It will maintain the tracking of everything and it will save in the database. Mm -hmm. Right? Okay. So everything will be saved in the database. What kind of database it is? Postgres. Sorry. Postgres SQL. You will not you will not see anything in the screen related to database. You will not see anything. Okay. Now you have created a cluster. Tell me what kind of configuration that we selected. I said we center size when I'm deploying. We center size tiny, small, medium, large, extra large. Right. So let me see. V center one seven So that's fine. So V center six point seven deployment size. You see clearly saying these are the sizes. This is what we deployed, right? So if you are deploying tiny V center, it requires minimum two GB, sorry, two CPU and ten GB RAM. Small medium, large, and extra large server requirements. Means if you deploy extra large, go to ESXi, vCenter. Now 2 GB, 10, sorry, 10 GB, 2 CPU. This VM size is how much? How much it will be? 24 CPU, 48 GB RAM. You would require for this VM if you want to deploy extra large. Extra large will support 2000 hosts, 35000 VMs. 
6.5 not 6.7 okay let me see 6.7 vmware 6.7 maximums if you search it let's see Is pair six point seven V center <coughs> V center maximums. Let's see. 2000 host power on VMs 25,000 total VM 35,000 number of V center servers you can link 15 total number of hosts it can manage 5000 and around 50,000 to 70,000 VMs it will manage in one one location total number of MAC addresses 65,000 MAC addresses it will support and 180 sessions it, you can 180 people can log in and manage the vCenter concurrent operations vMotion so these are the few maximums right yeah go ahead man I'll I'll, I'll uh, stop in few minutes okay more more of theory class today so go ahead I'll, I'll stop in five minutes next five minutes okay so number of okay. thank you Number of hosts in the cluster, I'm trying to find out. Okay, normally in 6.5, 64 is the maximum number of hosts within a cluster. And you'll see how many hosts that you can have. Cluster, all virtual disk. Okay, data stores, clusters, data stores, per data. Data store cluster 64 host. No, oh, sorry, 64 data stores. I'm I'm more interested in number of host. Yeah, ESXA host maximums. Let's see. <coughs> Let's show something. ESXA host, let me see cluster. Host per cluster 64 only, no change. Number of hosts per cluster is 64 only so means uh, on top of this cluster under this cluster sorry you can add 64 host i have three i can add more 61 means your ha drs ft v7 whatever the feature this role play is within 64 host only even though your v center supports 2000 host you cannot run all the features across all the 2000 host you can run these features within a closed boundary called cluster of maximum 64 host. You understand this point? Hello? Vivek? No. You understand this point or no? Hello? 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 Yes, man. I'm able to hear you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, please repeat it. What I'm saying, cluster supports 64 host. Okay. And vCenter supports total 2000 host. Now, whatever the features that we are talking about, HA, DRS, FT, vSAN and stuff, these features are bounded to cluster. Means, these features role play 
role play is within the cluster, not across the vCenter level. If I say within the cluster mm -hmm. means how many hosts you have within the cluster? Maximum 64 mm -hmm. hosts. What HA will do? We, I've explained you in brief in last class. If if you have one host, okay, running with few VMs, right? If this host crashed or gone or dead, you call it as these mm -hmm. VMs will come and restart here, here, or here, or somewhere else within this 64 host only. One is down, you still have another 63, right? Within this 63, these VMs will go and restart. How yes, many VMs can create on top of uh, each host? I'll... So, common sense, you have to refer this because this is what we are discussing since last 30 minutes. That means you are not concentrating. That is what I'm explaining. Right? Maximum yeah. virtual machine maximums on each host you can create. Right? It is hard to remember each and every maximum limit. So this portal will give you yeah. all the details. Anything you want, just go and query it here. Yeah. Clear? Please yeah. concentrate, man. Okay. Sorry. No problem. Yeah. So cluster will support 64. So, this is brief overview about vCenter. What we did so far. Okay. We have discussed about ESXA host. We have discussed about how to configure ESXA host installation and configuration in short. Okay. And we discussed about vCenter that contains two platform service controller and vCenter and we discussed brief vCenter options and what all the things that you need to consider and a couple of maximums for vCenter. These are the few things we covered so far. Now, my basic question is, okay, my basic question is, I have one server. I have one switch. I have one more server. This server is connected to switch. This server is also connected to switch. Now, server one want to send some data to server two. Can you explain me how the traffic is flowing? So, First of all, uh, data will go uh, from server one to switch, and then switch will uh, get the uh, group table, and through that it will uh, transfer the data to uh, server two. And it will check the MAC I, uh, MAC address, uh, what MAC address uh, it has to be sent. If it is, it is there, yeah. table. Uh, switch. There are few things. Will, yeah, there are few things we need to understand. There are few things to understand. Basically, we need to understand the difference between these two. If you say MAC address, this is layer two traffic. If you say IP address, layer three traffic. Okay, so I haven't mentioned layer anything. Okay, yeah, I haven't mentioned anything over here. It might be a layer two or it might be a layer three. What you said is correct, yeah. right? Okay, but in VMware, how it how it looks like? Let's imagine this is one ESX server. On top of it, one VM is there. On top of it, another VM is there. And I have one more VM here. And I have one more VM mm -hmm. here. Right? So, if this host sending some traffic from this cable to here, and switch will receive it, and again from this cable to here, then successful data transfer. Now, I want to send some traffic or some data from here to here how it will go. So from uh, this is uh, one is the ESXi host and two is also ESXi host and on top of it there are some VMs 
two VMs. You have to transfer the data between two VMs. Yes. Yeah. So from uh, if, uh, if it is a physical okay, if it is a physical aspect, sorry to interrupt. If it is a physical aspect, you have a cable from here to here. One physical cable is connected. From here to here, one physical cable is connected. So, you have say sorry from here to here. How it will identify this? I think first of all, uh, the data from uh, that particular VM into uh, one ESXi host, it will go to the network adapter of uh, from or VM to the ESXi host. Okay. Then hang, uh, hang on, hang on, hang on. So anyway, data is traveled till here. Now, how it will decide it should send to this or this? So there should be a particular information. They should have, uh, ESXi host, ESXi should have some particular information. It might be IP address or a host name. Okay, so right, we need to understand these things, right? The basic networking part tomorrow we'll cover it. So note it down. Mm -hmm. If you want to note it down, few things. What is VLAN? What is subnet? What is IP class? What is gateway? Gateway. Okay. And this. So just Google it about these few terms. Okay. okay. We'll get it. So yeah, tomorrow we'll discuss these things. Right? Good, yeah. good to good to stop. Or you have any questions? Yeah. Any questions? Uh, fine. We'll go to All right. Yeah. All right. Yeah, just Google it. Tomorrow we'll discuss these things. Okay. I'll stop here. Let's catch up tomorrow. Same time. Thank you.